So the last lecture we learned the distributed collaboration. So now in this lecture we are going to learn centralized collaboration, which is also called mediator pattern. This is another design pattern. All right. So we have learned that object-oriented software is basically not equal to a sequence of code. Is actually it is equal to configuration plus collaboration. So configuration means that we instantiate it, the objects and uh, configure them so that they can collaborate and collaboration means the objects send messages back and forth so that they will work together to achieve some common goal so for distributed collaboration so each object knows which object it works with so this is like in the scenario that in uh, in our daily life that you know whom you work with and you know whom uh, you impact if you do something. And centralized collaboration means that each object does not know whom they work with, and also does not know who, which objects that it impacts. So this is like the scenario that uh, not in our daily life is like the CIA agents case. So for CIA agents, so typically, they, when they collaborate together, they typically know only know the manager. And then the manager tell each agent what you should do. And so as long as you follow the rules, then everybody follow this, the instruction for the manager, then the whole uh, task will be accomplished. This will, I mean, in the uh, agent case, that will prevent if someone uh, betrayed the, the manager, then the, uh, other uh, agents won't be uh, uh, jeopardized. So this is pattern in the uh, design pattern case is called the mediator pattern. So let's take a look of the this example again. So the weakness of the distributed distri collaboration is that every subclass, the subclasses are tightly coupled. And so this will reduce the usability. And for example, you can see that we have uh, in for this application, we have seven objects. We have checkbox, bold and checkbox, italic, checkbox, and the line. These are the object names. Line edit family, label box, and the font combo box, and the uh, line edit size. So you can see that uh, these uh, the arrows means the signal and slots that this one send a signal, this one need to receive this, the signal, need to have a slot, receive the signal, and so on. And uh, this line edit family and font color box, they impact each other. So for distributed collaboration, another disadvantage is that it's difficult to change system behavior because the system behavior is distributed among many objects. So for centralized collaboration, so the classes are loosely coupled and uh, which will increase uh, usability. So every object only knows the mediator. So you can see that this is the pattern. This is like so every each of these seven each of these seven objects are like seven agents in the CI agent case and this uh, is like the manager. So everyone only knows the manager and the manager will tell what everyone need to do. So for example, you can see that the line edit family does not need to know there's uh, something called font common box, and font common box does not need to know, know there's uh, something called the line edit family. And uh, so this become easier uh, to change the system uh, behavior. This is a typo, easier. So um, we, if you want to change the, uh, the system behavior, you only need to modify the, moderator, the mediator because the mediator basically specifies the whole collaboration. All right, now let's take a look of how to achieve this. Okay, so we still need to <coughs> have the subclasses. In the subclass, for example, this line edit, we need to publicly inherit from Q line edit. It also need to have this Q uh, object macro and uh, the constructors are the same as before. We basically pass to them uh, the sub uh, the, the base class constructor. Now let's take a look at the signals. <coughs> so the line edits, remember we said this, each of these objects need to emit a signal to the uh, 
to the agent, to the to the uh, mediator, basically to the manager. So to notify the manager, we also need to tell the manager whom I mean, my address, so that the manager can access me. So in this case, we have this signal, public signal. So this uh, this signal we have void agent and this Q object star. So why do we put this Q object star? Uh, Q object pointer. That's because every uh, object in Qt inherit from Q object. So then every subclass uh, pointer, every defined direct class pointer can be uh, put here. All right. So we also need to have a slot, public slot. So this the slot is for receiving the predefined signal. So Remember the signal like uh, you input something or you select something that one will emit a predefined signal, and that signal you need to have a slot to receive that. And uh, once you receive this slot, you are going to emit this the signal that you defined. So we are going to have one that just uh, my my editing finished. For example, give a name, and this is a, a font combo box. Again, also. Inherit from the Q font combo box uh, base class and have a Q object macro and uh, this is a constructor basically pass the parameter to the base class uh, constructor and we also it also has I chain the same thing as a Q object pointer as the parameter and for slot I also need to receive its predefined signal basically it means something changed some something date and for this case is my current font changed. We got a font Q font uh, uh, object reference, and this is a checkbox similarly. So also here for receiving this predefined signal is my state changed. All right, now we come to main window. So main window we need to have a slot. So we remember everyone has a made I changed with the Q object pointer. Now we need to have a function uh, a slot. Whatever name you want, so we can say act by your change, and we need to have Q object pointer. All right. So now let's take a look of the these uh, uh, um, slots. Remember, everyone, we have this uh, public slots. We need to implement in this slot. In each of those objects for the slot, we just basically emit I change this, emit I change this, emit I change this. What parameter we receive doesn't matter. Now let's take a look of the main window .cpp. Okay, so this is uh, uh, a lot of signal and slots. Now let's take a look. It's not that uh, uh, complicated. All right. So first, so for line edit family, so we have this uh, uh, for line edit uh, family. So we have it emits uh, uh, editing finished. And then it has its own slot, right? It has its own slot. Same thing. So you can see that uh, this the object that that emit the signal and the object that receive the signal uh, are the same, right? And uh, then remember this one will emit this uh, I change. So we need to have I change signal from this line edit. We need to re uh, the receiving object will be this main window, which is this. And then it, the slot it. Uh, receive this signal is act by change with Q object star. And same thing for um, font combo box is uh, the same thing. We have this uh, um, the existing predefined signal is uh, current font changed and we have uh, one slot that receive that signal is uh, is uh, my font uh, current font changed. So both uh, are the same objects for the receiving and the sending, uh, emitting signal and the receiving signal, and then within this we will emit this uh, I change si I change signal. Then we we need to have connect this I change signal with uh, this director, with this mediator, and then act by your change. Same thing for the checkbox bold, checkbox italic, checks uh, and the line, and uh, line edit. So they all the same all right so now let's take a look of uh, the main window we have this slot act by your change then we need to implement this so we for 
when we receive this uh, parameters, this uh, uh, Q object pointer, we need to check which one it is. So simply we can just, this is Q object pointer and we just compare with uh, each uh, object that we know that for for this group, right? So so send object equal to UI arrow line edit family or not. If it is equal, then which means that uh, line edit family got changed. Then we get the Q line family, we get the text and we use that text. We um, instantiate the Q font uh, object and then we uh, let the label fonts, this label fonts is the label uh, and set font using this to set font. And also we let the font combo box to set the current font, which is the, uh, and uh, set current font. And then in this one, similarly, we gave this Q font as the Q font, uh, which generated this Q font object as the parameter. Now, second, let's take a look at, if this is uh, uh, the center object pointer is equal to the Q uh, font combo box, which means the user click this, uh, choose something, choose a uh, font type from the uh, list. And then we basically set uh, get the current font. We call the uh, UI um, font combo box, get the current font, and then let the label, bo uh, label files to set the font to be this current font. And similarly, we let the uh, line edit family to set text as this one. And we basically get the current font and we get the dot family, then we get this, uh, uh, we get this uh, the text, and uh, and this one is if it is checkbox bold. If it is checkbox bold, then we also get the UI. Uh, we get the label uh, fox. We get the current font. We get the current font, and uh, we then we this font we need to set the bold. Set bold. We need to get the uh, it's checked or not. We get this checkbox is checked or not, and because it uh, the action could be. Uh, checked or dechecked. So, and we set both, and then we let the label fonts to set font as you using this to set the font. Similarly for check box, check box italic, and also similarly for check box underline. And um, the last one is uh, if this is equal to line edit size, then what we do is we get the we get the label. Uh, we get the. Um, we need to get the current font, and then we check the uh, point size to be this one. And we get the text, and we convert to int, integer, and then we let the label font uh, fonts to set the font to be that one.